welcome back to my channel. My name's Danielle and I'm the owner of Damn Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. If you guys are new to my channel, I do want to let you know that all of my other groups are posted in the description below in case you guys want to check them out. My Damn Fancy Tutorial Group, my Damn Fancy Tribe, which is my mentorship group, and my Drunk Flamingo Glitter Group, which is where I offer pattern vinyl, glitter, and decals are all linked below to make it easier for you guys to find. Today's tutorial was definitely inspired by the trip that I just took. Me and Rachel went up to Gatlinburg for the Tumblr Invasion Convention, and of course we did a lot of shopping. And if you guys have been to the Gatlinburg area, you will know that all of the stores are trendy, cowgirl, western, and I was majorly inspired while I was up there. I love western cowgirl stuff, clearly, like my little cowgirl earrings, my... Jolene shirt. It just speaks my language. So I took lots of little elements that I saw while we were up there shopping and I translated them onto a few cups. So today we are going to be learning this fun neutral color palette tumbler. I am a sucker for neutrals. So this cup just screams my name. So we are doing a spray painted checkered pattern. It is very similar to my spray painted plaid technique. We're just applying the tape differently. Of course, we added some vinyl disco balls, a fun decal that I just created and is up for grabs on the drunkflamingo.com. And then we finished it off with cowgirl text on the back. I think it turned out super cute. I love it so much. And I am going to show you guys how I made it. If you guys have any questions along the way about steps that I did or materials that I use, just ask in the comments and I will come back and answer them for you. But for now, we're going to go ahead and get started on this tutorial and I hope you guys enjoy. Here is a quick rundown on everything we are going to learn in today's tutorial and what steps are going to be covered. And if you're ready, let's get started. Alright guys, so we're going to start with a 20 ounce skinny from the Stainless Steel Depot. I spray painted this with a flat white. I also taped off the rim on the bottom just so we would get a nice clean line for our spray paint. And then we are going to start taping. If you guys have watched my spray painted plaid tutorials, which are also up on YouTube, this is pretty much how we start out. We are laying lines of tape and then we are removing the middle tape because this is just our spacer. And we are going to do this all around our cup. I never measure, um, I don't get them exact. If you are somebody who likes to be very precise in your tumbler designs, then you can definitely calculate how wide each section should be and divide it that way. I just apply my tape lines and if one tape line is slightly smaller or larger than the other ones, I just space them out accordingly, which you will see me do here. So this one right here, I'm just moving it over slightly so that a couple sections we're just kind of evening out those tape lines so that when we spray paint it and get everything um, pinstriped off, the larger sections are not going to be noticeable. So here is where it differs from my spray painted plaid tutorial. If we were doing a plaid, we would spray paint our tumbler now, but we are not going to do that. We're going to move on to step two, which is applying the tape lines down the tumbler. So like I mentioned earlier, it's very similar to taping for a spray painted plaid. We're just taping in different steps. So we're basically skipping the first spray painted step and we're taping. So 
so we are going to continue this all the way down the tumbler adding our tape lines then removing the spacer and I'm just going to let this play because I know a lot of people get confused on the tape lines when to tape when to remove the tape when to spray paint it I still get questions all the time even after people watch my spray painted plant tutorials and I'm sure I'll get questions after people watch this tutorial as well so I'm just letting it play I'm not going to speed it up So after we have all of our tape on there, we are going to take this outside and we're going to spray paint this with different shades of beige. And then I kind of misted the entire tumbler with a champagne -y gold. So this is after we spray painted. And the next thing we're going to do is remove all of this tape. I was looking for my little tweezers and I could not find them anywhere. I have like five pairs and I can never find them when I need them. So I am just going to use these tweezers to remove the tape. And just like my spray painted plaid, I am not getting rid of this tape. I am sticking it to the side of my desk and I am going to reuse this for the next step. That way we're not wasting a whole bunch of tape and also, since this tape is going to be applied over what we just spray painted, I like to use tape where some of the tack has been removed. And we're just slowly peeling this tape off. And I'm using a flat mat, if you guys did not catch that at the beginning of the video, but I like flat paints because they dry much quicker. And whenever I do these spray painted cups, I don't ever have issues with my tape peeling off. And I pretty much spray paint each step right after the next. And I just like flat paint because it dries quicker. Gloss can stay tacky for quite a while. We don't want that. So the next thing we're going to do is apply our next set of tape lines right over this beige tape that we just sprayed. And I am trying my best to match up the beige spray paint squares on the tape to the squares that are on the tumbler. Because this cup can be a little tricky because we do not see what we already spray painted. It's going to be covered up. And since some of our lines were a little larger, if you will remember how we had to adjust that tape, I'm just applying another piece of tape right on top of what we just applied just to cover that small section of spray paint that is peeking out under that tape. But I'm still kind of lining up those spray painted squares right on top of what we already spray painted. And we're just doing this all around the cup. And once we get our last tape line on, we are going to apply the rest of the tape going around the tumbler. So this differs from the spray painted plaid because with the spray painted plaid, you're basically applying a line of tape, spray painting, applying another 
set of tape lines, spray painting, removing the tape, and then reapplying tape and spray painting. So there is a little bit more step to the spray painted plaid, I think. And for the checkerboard, we're basically applying the tape both ways, spray painting, removing that tape and reapplying it, and then spray painting again. Sorry if that's confusing to some of you guys that are visual learners. <laughs> I know it can be hard to keep them straight. So when I'm wrapping this tape, I am trying to apply it right in line with those spray painted squares that are on the tape lines because I know that's where my spray painted squares are on the tumbler. And I want to make sure that those are as covered as they can be. That way our lines will be as crisp as they can be. And if there is any small little spray paint that kind of seeps through the tape, it's not that big of a deal because we are going to be going over all of the lines with pinstripes. And you can kind of camouflage any seepage. So we are going to press this down and spray paint it again. These are the colors that I used. It was smoky beige, driftwood, and then cheers from Color Shot is what I kind of misted the entire tumbler with just to give it a little bit of shimmer. So once we have our second spray painted step complete, we are going to remove all of this tape. And at this point, you can go ahead and discard it. We will no longer be using this tape. And another tip, when you are spray painting, do not be too heavy handed. I just kind of missed until I get full coverage. So I will mist with one color, then I will go in and mist with another color. And if I can still see that white through, I will go back and mist with the first color just until I get full coverage. Because unlike the Buffalo plaid tumblers, where I typically just mist to get partial coverage, I want full coverage when I'm doing a checkered pattern. You don't have to have full coverage if you don't want it. That was just my preference for this particular cup. So I was loving how this cup turned out already. The next step is going to be to apply a layer of epoxy. I'm just going in with Artistry's Fast Set and I am using white linen. I just wanted a little bit of sparkle now, if you wanted to, you could have gone ahead and applied your pinstripes, but I personally only wanted the glitter to cover the checkered pattern. I did not want the glitter over the pinstripes or the decal or anything like that. So I opted to go ahead and just apply my epoxy with a little bit of glitter before I did my pinstripes. If you guys have not tried Artistry and you want to, I do have a discount code down below. I also have a discount code for the Tumblr grip. I love my Turner and my grips from them. So I am just smoothing out my epoxy, making sure I get any globs of epoxy off. I don't want one section too heavy and then I am removing my tape, which I totally forgot that I had on there. And then I'm going to take my big torch and pop all of my bubbles. And once this layer of epoxy cures, I am going to take it off and then we're going to apply our pinstripes. But I was loving how this cup looked. 
it's so pretty. So I also went around the rim with my edging tool from Cami Page Boutique. That is how I get my flawless rims. I did not film that in this tutorial, but I do on a lot of my videos. And then I'm just going to start pinstriping. I have a pinstripe file on thedrunkflamingo.com. It has my most popular pinstripe sizes, which is typically 0 0.07, 0 0.05, and 0 0.03. I'm just speeding this up a little bit for you guys. For this particular tumbler, I did use the 0 0.03 size. I wanted something very thin, but just enough to give my squares that nice crisp line. And I'm just using the textured gold from Cricut. As you guys can see, whenever I print out pinstripes, I just print out a full sheet. That way I have loads of pinstripes when I need them. So now we're applying the pinstripes the opposite way. And I knew for sure that I was going to apply this decal that I designed, the Let's Go Girls. But the back to me seemed a little bit plain. Which is why I decided to go in and add this cowgirl text to the back. I thought it was just a cute addition to the back and it filled up some space. And I know people ask all the time, do you apply your text going up your cup or down your cup? And personally, I apply any names or text going from bottom to top. The reason why I do that is because if you'll pay attention to most soft drink cans or drink cans in general, all of the text, if the name is going up the can, is always from bottom to top. And to me, it draws your eye up. And also, I figured that these big name companies have probably spent thousands of dollars researching on which application produced a more positive outcome. So that is why I apply my words going up the tumbler instead of down. So I just layered my little letters black on a tan base. And I'm just applying them one by one. That way I have a little bit more control on how they fit in these little squares. And as you can see, I do not smooth them down until I get them perfect. I did have to go and adjust this little R. And next I'm going to apply the decal directly on the other side, but I did remove this decal because I did remember the last time I applied a decal over pinstripes. I could still see it after, I could still see the pinstripe lines under the decal after I epoxied. So I just removed it and epoxied one more time and then reapplied my decal. So don't be like me, don't try to save a step, just epoxy those pinstripes and then apply your decal. So now the decal is on and it's nice and smooth. And I was still thinking that this cup was lacking a little. So I decided to print out these decals I love these little disco balls and I definitely think that this is what the tumbler needed. So I just printed them out in different sizes. It will depend on what tumbler you're using. This was a 20 ounce tumbler. If I were using a curved tumbler, which is thicker up top or even a 30 ounce tumbler, then my disco balls would have been a larger size. I will link these below for you if y'all need some disco balls. 
And yes, I did weed all of the tiny little squares out from the solid disco balls. And some of these solid disco balls, um, they were originally missing some of the little panels, which I thought was cute. So for the ones that were not missing any panels, I did kind of remove some of them just to give it kind of like that highlighted look, like the light is hitting it in those sections. And yeah, I'm not going to lie. These were a pain to apply to the tumbler, but I'm really happy with how they turned out. So the struggle was worth it. And some of these disco balls did not have the little hanger. I don't know what you call it. The little line. So this is where having pinstripes cut out ahead of time can work to your benefit. So I just took some black pinstripes, the thinnest one that I had, and just applied them to the top of my disco balls like their little hanger. So right now I'm just applying some of the little pieces that did not come off when I weeded the disco ball and I'm just sticking them to the cup and it worked out perfectly. And I'm going to do the same thing for this one. There were just a couple little pieces missing at the bottom that did not come off when I weeded it. So I'm just applying them now. That's why I don't ever wad up my discarded vinyl because you never know what piece is missing until you get it on your cup. So I'm going to grab one of my pinstripes and I think this pinstripe is 0 0.05 in size, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm just applying this right over the line that is already there. And then I'm going to cut it right before I get to that larger disco ball. And then I'm applying, I think two more. So once I have this on my cup, I am going to take my quick seal from artistry I'm going to seal everything in really good I did not apply UV resin over these um, pinstripes like I usually do because these were very thin I used my heat gun and I felt confident that they were not going to lift under epoxy and they did not but I did seal them with quick seal this vinyl I know from past experience has a tendency not to stick to epoxy. I'm referring to the textured Cricut vinyl. So I always seal it. So I am sure that the epoxy is going to stick to it. And I'm just applying some of these little stars that were on the disco ball decals. And after my quick seal has dried, I typically wait about an hour I am going to apply two final coats of epoxy and then your tumbler will be complete. But of course, my last layer of epoxy got a little piece of fuzz stuck in it right on top of the decal. So I had to sand it down and reapply the final, final coat of epoxy. And then it was complete. 
So here are some finished pictures of this tumbler. I love how it turned out. I hope you guys do as well. If y'all decide to try this tumbler, please post in one of my groups because I love to see what you guys come up with. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next tutorial that is coming up. If y'all enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group, my Damn Fancy Tribe, or the Drunk Flamingo Glitter group. All are linked in the description. Thanks for watching.